buddy of mine, Jack Ellis, wrote an article on Laravel News the other day talking about five tips for writing Laravel apps that scale. And one of the things that he talked about was doing less in your commands. And whilst the advice that he gave there is pretty good, and and he goes into a lot of detail about why you might want to do less in your commands, one of the things that I wanted to extrapolate a little bit on was the fact that if your commands aren't doing a lot, or if you've got a lot of commands, they can eventually start running into each other um, when they're executing as part of your task scheduler. So I just want to show you why that happens uh, just in the underlying way that the scheduled tasks run in Laravel and some of the things you can do to mitigate against that. So as I said, he talked about this here, essentially trying to do as little as possible in your commands, which will help speed things up. Um, doing things in chunks to speed things up, dispatching jobs onto your queue is a good way of doing things, making sure that your tasks execute as quickly as possible and deferring long running tasks such as sending email or processing or running reports into background jobs. But if we just fire up a new little app here, just call it task, it doesn't really matter what it is. And we're going to take a little bit, we're going to take a bit of a look at Laravel's task scheduling. So if we have a look in the schedule run command, we can see in here that the handle method essentially goes for each of the due events, run them. And what's essentially happening, if you've got one task, it's okay, it's going to execute that. But if you've got two, it's going to run them sequentially. The longer your tasks take to run, the the more this can become impactful on your application because one task has to finish before the next one starts. So if you're running multiple tasks that run every minute or multiple tasks that run every five minutes, because of the way that it's doing all these things one after the other, you're going to run into issues if those tasks are taking a long time. And to illustrate that, we're just going to put some, um, we'll basically just demonstrate it inside the console kernel uh, for simplicity. So in a base application, you've got this thing in here. And just do this, right? Uh, we'll print. This is the first task. We'll chuck a new line on there for good measure. And then we'll sleep this for 15 seconds. So let's simulate that this is happening. Um, you know, that this task takes 15 seconds to run. And you'll see here why this becomes a bit of an issue. So if we say this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. And we want each of these tasks to run every minute. That one, that one, that one, that one. So each of these tasks is going to run every minute. Now, I don't actually have... Um, the cron running, but we'll simulate it here by just doing a schedule run. So you can see the first task is now running. And because we've got that sleep in there, simulating a 15 second task, you'll see that this actually keeps running and running. So the second one won't run until the first task finish and the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one. Now each of those five tasks is running um, every minute. So what's going to happen is that your fifth task will still be running before the first task um, starts running again. So you have one that runs 15 seconds, two that runs 15 seconds, three runs 15, four runs 15. At the end of four, right, four by 15 is a minute. The scheduler will start running again and it'll pick up the first task while the fifth one is still running. Now, typically this isn't an issue. Um, if, if those things don't rely on each other, then, you know, the fifth one running while the first one's running is no big deal. But if you imagine in a bigger application, we've got lots and lots of tasks running whether you've got you know 10 or 15 tasks running every five minutes or 10 or 15 tasks running every minute or 15 or 30 or whatever, it doesn't really matter. The fact that Laravel executes each of these scheduled tasks one after the other is gonna eventually cause you issues. Now Laravel gives you a couple of ways um, of working around this as we run out the, the last of those five tasks. Um, so the easiest way of doing this is to essentially just tack on a without overlapping here. All 
Right, and so essentially what this will do is that if task one is running and the scheduler starts running again, then task one won't start running again. I apologize for not putting line breaks in here. It probably makes it a bit more difficult to read. Um, so in doing this, say that that first task takes 65 seconds to run and it wants to run every minute. Now, it may have progressively gotten slower over time, so it was only taking you know, 10 seconds to run initially, but as your apps got bigger, you've got more users, you've got more data to process, it's then started to take longer and longer. The without overlapping will at least stop that from happening. But if it's critical to your application that it runs every minute, you're going to want to look at doing something, as Jack mentioned in his blog post, dispatching jobs or deferring things to the background to prevent any issues there. Um, because a task that is set to not overlap if it runs for 65 seconds, that means it's not actually going to run for another minute. So it'll get to it'll get to 60 seconds. Um, the scheduler will start running. It'll go, hey, this task is already running. I'm not going to execute it again. And that means that your task that has to run every minute is now only running every two minutes. And as the application gets bigger, it could be every three, five, whatever. So uh, without overlapping is one way to tackling it. There's also the, the ability to run only on one server. So you can do something like only on one server. Or actually, I think it's probably just on one server, right? So you do it on one server, and that means you could have multiple servers, um, and, and that way you could run it every minute. So because of the sequential nature, you know, task one could still be running, but task two could start on another server and things like that. So um, just a couple of things to be mindful of when you are doing that, just to prevent yourself running into issues. Um, it, it's key. To, to make the schedule tasks as quick running as possible, as efficient as possible, deferring as much processing to the background as possible to avoid running into, into issues and things like that. So hope you've learned something.